Hello everybody and welcome to another gorgeous day that Mother Earth has brought us. Today we will begin our mornings as we always do with our morning affirmations. I know, although you already know the importance of affirmations, let me again teach our newer audience members about the power that these daily affirmations can bring not only to us, but to Mother Nature herself. I recently read in an interview with author Mike Berners-Lee of the book There Is No Planet B, a handbook for the make or break years, about the importance of having set values. Berners-Lee says that values aren't just a nice thing to have, but they also hold practicality in aligning our goals. He says that if we want globally coordinated efforts to deal with climate change, we're gonna need to ask a lot of questions about the specific values we want to sustain. This really resonated with me because it shows us that we have to practice our own consciousness of self. Global efforts may seem daunting, but we can start with our local communities and we can surely start with looking into ourselves. If we want to make radical change to our planet, we must admit to being honest with ourselves. Why are we really committing to this change? Think about it like this. If no one else on this planet was putting in the work that I am doing right now, would I still be doing it? When we strengthen our consciousness with the knowledge that we believe in, we strengthen our ability to make the change we want to see. It is so important to hold on to our values when we go out into the world to teach others about the importance of living sustainable lifestyles. Today, we remind ourselves of our values as climate activists, such as responsibility, holding each other accountable, education, expanding our knowledge, and honesty with ourselves and from our community. Now that we are all aware of the power of affirmations, let us begin. Repeat after me. I am a drop in a large ocean. I can make a difference today. I can do anything I put my mind to. Today is a brand new start. Again, I am a drop in a large ocean. I can make a difference today. I can do anything I put my mind to. Today is a brand new start. Thank you. Hi y'all, my name is Rachel Ziano and welcome to my small segment of congruence and composting with Rachel Ziano. So I'm going to tell you about what congruence is and how you can relate it to composting. So a little more about composting is it's a way that we can recycle organic material and break it down to nourish the soil. When the soil is nourished, it then in turn nourishes the plant as well as lessens waste in landfills. So after defining what composting is, let's go talk about congruence. I was looking at congruence and when reading the leadership textbook, it defined it as congruence requires that one has identified personal values, beliefs, attitudes, emotions, and acts consistently with those values, beliefs, attitudes, and emotions. Congruent individuals are genuine, honest, and live up to their values. So the best way I summed up congruence is to be true to your values and consistently be living out your life with those values in mind. It can be a little hard to imagine what that looks like, so I did a tiny bit of research, put on my hat, and also my magnifying glass, and found a person who is a great example of congruence in relationship to the environment. So, a perfect example of congruence and composting in relation to the environment is Tina. Tina is an executive assistant for the program Cal Recycle. CalRecycle is the California Department of Resources, Recycling, and Recovery. The program actually oversees the state waste management, recycling, and waste reduction program. She says in the video that was shared by CalRecycle that she has a personal love for the environment and working with others. So as she works in CalRecycle as an executive assistant, she is constantly communicating with the governor's office and the public on ways to protect the environment. 
She gets to implement her core values by working with people, by going to colleges, promoting the Cal Recycling Program, as well as helping to protect the environment by raising awareness about these environmental issues. So I know how we have different occupations and interests, so I found a few ways where we can be congruent with composting. So there are several ways to be congruent in regards to composting. So a few ways to advertise out composting or to bring congruence to composting are sharing new articles and information about composting with your friends and your family, um, inspiring those conversations to happen everywhere, working with composting organizations, obviously composting yourself. Um, and the last thing you can do is educating yourself further about the benefits as composting in relation to the environment. Thank you again for listening to my small segment on congruence and composting, and I'll see you later. Hello everyone. Today we are talking about commitment for positive change. Being committed means long-term activism and investing your time and energy into accomplishing something. It also includes taking action when possible and following through on your intentions. There are some organizations within the compost community that show commitment. But first, let us look at these quotes. Right, They show that commitment is an act, not a word, and it is necessary to be committed in order to follow through on your promises and actually make plans for, doing, for bringing about change. Now, some examples of organizations that show commitment include the group that created Kiss the Ground, which is a film. Their goal was to spread awareness about our social health, and they remained committed to that goal, took action, and created a documentary. Another group would be anyone who composts because composting can take a little bit of commitment because you have to work out any issues that the compost may have. Usually if your hair ratios are correct, your compost will decompose quite well and nothing will go wrong. However, if there are any issues, you are showing leadership by being committed and adjusting your ratios or finding other solutions to your composting problems. Another group is Community Services Unlimited, which is committed to helping communities live sustainably. For example, they teach people how to garden. This includes composting. They recently had a composting workshop at their urban farm, which is near the Expo Center, and they have existed since 1977 and show commitment by their long-term involvement. LA Compost, a group that we talked about in the podcast, also shows commitment. Their original goal was to use bicycle teams to make composting more accessible. Their main goal has not changed. They still wish to make composting more accessible. However, they now have composting hubs set around the city, usually at community centers such as churches and schools. This is because their original idea of using bicycle teams was not possible in, our, in LA due to urban sprawl. However, this photo shows a setup that is used in Austin, Texas. So it does work in other areas. It just did not work in LA. However, LA Compost did not give up. They created their composting hub model. Here you can see a few of their hubs that they currently have. And these hubs also give local community members the opportunity to volunteer where they can help turn the compost and make the piles, which is giving them the information and knowledge to compost if they ever have the ability to do so themselves. Hi everyone, this is Rachel and this is a small segment on collaboration and composting. So first of all, what is collaboration? Collaboration by textbook definition is multiplying a group's effort through collective contributions, capitalizing on diversity and strength of the relationship and interconnections of individuals involved in the change process. But to summarize collaboration as a whole is collaboration is when you actually work with others. 
and it turns out to be more effective and as the definition states it multiplies your efforts as well as theirs. This is possible as everyone is contributing and everyone has different experiences which only enriches the project or the outcome of the collaboration. In conclusion, the collaboration is something that can turn out much better than one person's contribution since it is since it is involving everyone's experiences, everyone's um, strengths, and everyone's um, best efforts. One program in particular, which I feel is a good example of composting and in collaboration of others, is LA Compost. They were actually first built of volunteers, friends, and family who came together to make the dream of community composting happen. The organization understands how composting takes up space and not everyone necessarily has the space to compost, so they actually collaborated with churches, school gardens, and workspaces to help compost. And then it eventually developed into community composting hubs throughout LA. Each of these composting hubs is a creation of the collaboration of the communities around. The program also collaborates with LAF PC, which helps with waste rescue, the Los Angeles Public Works, which helps implement programs such as a food waste challenge promoting waste reduction, and the Los Angeles neighborhood, which engages the residents with design process of green space development through a grassroots policy reform. So as you can see, um, there's many collaborations that LA Compost does, and without the help of the programs they collaborated with or the people they included, such as volunteers, friends, family, then none of this could happen. So a lot of things can happen with the collaboration of others since everyone puts in their own efforts to make one dream come true. Thank you again for hearing composting and in collaboration with others, Rachel Zana. I'll see you guys next time. The social change model thrives when the individuals of the community finds a common purpose. Currently, climate change has affected our earth drastically. Shockingly, only 9% of plastic ever produced has been recycled. The rest has been accumulated in landfills, trash dumps, the ocean, on land, and only a small percentage has been incinerated. An estimated of 15 billion trees are cut down every year. We also see that 100 companies are responsible for 71% of industrial emissions. The final statistic I have is that each year about 108 billion pounds of food is wasted in the United States alone. These statistics are only just a few problems related to climate change. However, it is what empowers individuals and communities to seek change. It is the common purpose that connects us. If we shift the climate change narrative of sustainable individual active into an adaptive, intersectional, and systemic solution, we get a common purpose that centralizes positive adaptive strategies in order to promote for systemic change through climate action. In my group's action project, we focus on composting, which is a measure to combat the climate crisis. We are driven by the common purpose of spreading awareness and initiating change by implementing measures to the Mount community. Good evening and welcome back to Earthly Update. Can we get along? Our weekly segment where we find out if climate activists and others can actually get along. My name is Faith Cuevo, and today we are looking at whether we can get along with hunters and fishers. Now, I know it sounds crazy. When we think of hunters, we think of these cruel, barbaric people who destroy our ecosystems by wiping out populations of already endangered species for pleasure. However, in a study published in January 2020, Jessica Love Nichols interviews various hunters and fishers who call themselves sportsmen and sportswomen. Now, we know that hunting and fishing is not exactly what we stand for, 
Yet through Love Nichols research, we realize that we are not as different from sports people as it seems to be. You see, it turns out we all have the same beliefs. In the interview, Love Nichols discovered three primary practices of sportsmen and sportswomen. One, a relationship with nature. Two, distinguishing belief and opinion. And three, valuing the wildlife practices of the past. Isn't that fascinating? We as climate activists hold the same beliefs and practices of, as hunters and fishers. This, my friends, highlights an important value that is called controversy with civility. You see, within this large community of people who want to make a change to our planet, there are many viewpoints and opinions that can cause a rift in our relationships with each other. Remember when people thought the California fires were started by aliens? Yeah, we don't talk to those people anymore. But what if the people we think are doing wrong actually want to do some rights? The climate change community needs to be more open to having these tough conversations with people we don't particularly agree with, such as what Love Nichols has done with sportsmen and sportswomen. I think that once we become more civil towards those we deem to cause controversy with our beliefs and opinions, the real change we want to see happen begins. We can talk circles around each other all day long, but once we actually step outside our large non-plastic biodegradable bubble and listen to what others think and feel about the issues that keep us up at night, then we can start to make a difference in more people's lives than we could have ever imagined. We have to keep the main goals in mind, which is to promote and build our community of people who want to combat climate change. What better way to do so than having robust discussion with those we seem to disagree with the most? I hope today we've provided you with some clarity on how to speak about controversial topics with a heightened sense of civility. I'm Faith Cuevo, and this is Earthly Update. Oh, hey! My name is Alyssa Barola. Nice to meet you. Right now, I'm trying to decide which leader I want to vote for in my community. I'm looking for a leader who views climate change as a political, social, and an environmental problem. I'm doing this because I really want to be involved in my community. I want to be an active citizen. But, you know, being involved in your community means much more than just voting. There's actually a lot of ways you can become an active citizen. Actually, let me show you some of the ways. But first, vote. To become an active citizen, you can start by creating change in your community. Now, tackling climate change does not have to start as a wide-scale action. You can start by talking to your local council office for any current initiative. You can join a club or even start a club in your school of, that talks about topics like recycling, food waste, or composting. You can also spread awareness by printing flyers like what I'm trying to do. Let's check it out. So this flyer, I'm trying to spread awareness about composting. It says here, what materials are compostable? And it lists different things about what's compostable. So in my action group project, we want to make composting accessible for the students at the Mount. We want to see our school become more sustainable by reducing their waste and implementing these measures like composting bins. But in order to take action on composting, we want to make sure the students of the Mount know what's going on. And to do that, we are spreading awareness by putting up these flyers. Now, what do you think about this flyer? Heat? Change? I think it's good. Hashtag facts.
In an age of modern technology, active citizenship can start by reposting an Instagram post, sending a snap, or retweeting your favorite climate change activists. Some people that I suggest that you should follow is at QueerBrownVegan and at BrownGirl underscore Green on Instagram. Be the solution, not the pollution. If you're not quite ready to march on the streets, you can make small, important actions right at your own house. You can write a letter to Congress. Here, I'm writing a letter to Senator Alex Padilla, but I'm honestly not sure if I should write dear or to the U.S. Senator. You can use a reusable bottle to reduce your plastic waste. Instead of using Google, you can switch your search engine to Ecosia to help plant trees while surfing the web. Pretty neat, right? You can reuse old t-shirts that you don't want anymore and turn them into towels to clean those dirty surfaces, like this. These are environmentally friendly behaviors you can add to your day-to-day -day routine. Which will you add to become an active citizen? Hello, now we will talk about change. This is not part of the seven C's, rather it's a result of them because the whole goal of the social change model is to bring about positive social change. So let's talk about some change that has already occurred. For example, in 2016, Governor Jerry Brown signed into legislation SB 133, which required residents and businesses to have a subscription to an organic recycling collection service by um, 2022, next year. This helps reduce the amount of organic waste that enters a landfill since everyone will have the option to do organic recycling, thus removing that barrier. That also means our facility managers and cafeteria workers at MSMU will have to get a subscription to the organic recycling company. Our food services already had a subscription with Athens Service and they took one step further any food that is still edible is donated to homeless shelter. Um, called the Midnight Mission. It's in here. Our facilities, from my understanding, does not currently have a subscription, and they were working on it. On the left is an image that they sent when I asked about their um, organic matter recycling or composting. And then there are also other incentives by the city to encourage composting. For example, on the right is a webinar um, that occurred in October. It was mostly focused on water-wise gardening, but that also included mulching, composting, and something called grass cycling, a sort of in-stew composting. They also provided some resources for anyone who wished to start their own compost thing bin. For example, this is one such resource. Um, just talking about the different soil types. And then this is their grass cycling diagram. And grass cycling is, as I said, an in-stoop compost, which just means you leave your grass clippings on the lawn so that it may decompose back into the soil. And finally, here are a few organizations that are working to promote compost. A few we've already talked about, such as Kiss the Ground, Community Services Unlimited and LA Compost. Clean LA is government-based and the organizer for the webinar. Compostable is sort of a subscription service and Urban Growers Collective promotes urban gardening. Thank you so much for coming and I hope you have a nice day.